with the ansible day 15 session right ansible day 15 session and yesterday like we had covered few of the topics like ansible tax and ansible uh, ignore underscore s so this were the two things which i had yesterday we had covered and of course like we had covered some basics of of what was a you know some of the queries which the people asked me right so i just discussed few of the things right so today like uh, or today also we will be discussing some very basic or few uh, you know like important uh, stuff what you will find in ansible right so what we will cover today so today we are going to cover with the uh, ansible uh block uh, rescue and always so this is very important right in uh, many times in an interview right they ask uh, about this block rescue and always right so let's see like what exactly is it so so let me open the ms paint okay i'm just checking the recording is going on yes the recording is going on okay so we have the ansible server or ansible control manager and this is nothing but the worker node 1 and worker node 2 right so this is nothing but your ansible server or ansible control manager or ansible configuration management anything can call and this is nothing but your node 1 and this is node 2 so these are basically worker nodes right <laughs> now both this worker node uh, sorry ansible uh, sorry node 1 worker node 1 and worker node 2 both are both are connected with your ansible server it means that basically ansible servers maintain ip addresses of both these nodes in its inventory right so now so what is the topic today so today we'll be discussing about the block rescue and always so these are the three important things which we will be using in our playbook though as i said it's a very small topic but it adds a lot of value while writing a playbook file right now where we use this block rescue like for example there are there are there are chances like where uh, you know like you would be uh, like uh, for example like for example suppose i will try to write a playbook file something like this way okay what is it i'll be writing something like hosts all host all become as task now what i will do basically i will try to write some text inside a particular file suppose for to do that you can either use a copy command so copy command also can be used to write some content inside a file or else you know very well that there is something like a due to spaces line in file model you know very well this right so you have this model by name line in file model so what you will do here you will basically provide the path information like for example if i say slash temp slash uh, my file dot txt any file right so what you are saying that so when this file exists or if this file exists it means that a user is assuming that this file exists right if this file exists what you need to do you need to basically you need to write some text inside that file so what is the text something like welcome to ansible something like this so what a user is expecting that a user is expecting right that this file exists if this file exists write this content into this file so line in file it actually doesn't create a file it uh, it always does an operation onto an existing file but or but what a user is thinking or what uh, the person who is writing a playbook file right he would be thinking that this file is already existing in that path that is slash temp tp it means that in both these nodes right in this both this node like under the temp it is expect the file my file.txt to be ex to be existed actually like this so if it exists then what happened that you have to write some text inside this file so that is nothing but welcome to ansible but assume that you are expecting that this file to be existing but assume that this file is not there then what kind of a precaution you will take so it means that you say that rajesh at any cost i have to write this text inside a file so you say that this file exists then only you will write the content to this file but assume that this file doesn't exist then what kind of a precaution you will take so that's the reason what happened right you will be calling a rescue actually 
so rescue it means that what is a risk you will take what are the precautions you will take if this uh, if this task is getting failed if this task is getting failed you will take some precaution right so what is the precaution you will take you will say that you by using the risk you will say that rajesh i will try to create this file right i'll try to create this file. how you will try to create this file by using the file model you can create the file and then by again by using a line in file model you will try to write the same text inside a file it means that already you are having some plan it means that if any of this particular task fails so as a uh, ansible uh, you know a developer as a person who, uh, when you write a playbook file you will take a precaution that if this condition if this task is getting failed then you have uh, you have a rescue where you can actually create a file and write text inside it like that it means that at any case whatever the user required right that should not get failed that's the reason what happened right this block and rescue are being used actually so now you say that rajesh okay if this file doesn't exist then what will happen so then you will say that uh, you have to use a rescue actually but before you use a rescue this content whatever this task is the right this should be a part of a uh, this should be a part of a block actually so how do you write it then like before it starts here so let me don't think guys let me enter so so i'll just make it down here so what i'll do here here i'll start writing it so what i will do here up so below the task actually i will try to write a block actually right so i'll give two spaces one to hyphen and i'll use a block actually right so this is the block so whatever i'm using here right that block is it means that whatever this line in file content right that will be a part of this block actually so always a rescue will work whenever there is a block both work together it doesn't mean that rajesh i don't have a block only i will mention rescue does it work no it will not work in that way you have to use a block and rescue together actually okay so what i will do i will just say block then uh, uh, what i would do i will rewrite the same thing again so, so i will give two space here you can even give the name for the block also like for example if you give a name right for example if you say uh, double space a two spaces hyphen name you can specify the block name like block 1 or else like uh, uh, any name actually i will write my name like something like block 1 or block 2 something so you can give the name of for each and every block but right now i am not using that block so i am not giving any kind of a block name here so what i will be using here directly i will be using like i will give two spaces here one two hyphen a line in file model i'll be using same thing so what you are doing here you are just giving a two space path is nothing but the same thing whatever slash temp slash my file dot txt okay then what you are going to write guys so you would be writing let me remove this content because it's the same thing whatever it i have written right same thing i would be repeating it here so what i will do here i will just say line and i will just say welcome to ansible so it means that basically you are trying to make this line in file under one block so why you are making like this because like for example in case this line in file model if it get failed when it will get failed when this file doesn't exist then what is a rescue so basically rescue will always come it starts with wherever you are having a block right the b right there it starts actually so rescue right so what is a precaution you will take so you will say that rajesh in the rescue so what i will give i'll give two spaces like this one two hyphen file like and then like what is the parameter or attributes you say so you give two spaces path is nothing but this slash temp slash my file dot txt It means that you are trying to create this file first. So then you will just say that state is nothing but touch, right? So if you say touch, it means that this file will get created. So obviously this is what you require. First you need to create a file, and then what you do that you will again call this a line in file model here, and give the same stuff actually. Like let me write the next line. 
SHS as this a path. Bash temp, bash my file dot txt. What is the content you have to write? You will write the content here. So you have to use line. So content is nothing but same stuff like welcome to Ansible. Right? So that's all, guys. So it means that. So what you're doing here, you're just making sure that if this block fails, if this fails, it means that if this file doesn't, doesn't exist or else due to some reason, this line in file model is getting failed. In that case, what happened? You're calling a rescue here. So the rescue, what happened that? You're just creating a file, myfile.txt and the temp, and you are calling a line in file model and you are writing the same content into this file. So at any cost, you want to make sure that your playbook should get Successfully, it should get executed. So in that case, this block and rescue plays a very vital role, right? So you could see that here, guys. So the rescue will always has to be aligned with the block. If there is a space here and there, right, this rescue will not work. Suppose assume that this block has been successfully executed. The line line file has been executed. Means that assume that this file already exists. So then in that case, what happens that this is rescue will never be called at all. It is not required, right? When this required, when the block when this line in file or whatever the model or what are the tasks which are there on a block, right? If that fails, then only this rescue will be called. Otherwise, the rescue will not be called, right? So in that case, whatever, whenever you are writing any task, always you will take some precautionary step. If that particular task has failed, then what, what I have to do next? So in that case, what happened that you would be using this block and rescue, right? This is very important. And sometimes they would ask in interview also. So you have to make sure that you you know, you remember this concept and you should be able to uh, you know, give a small example of when you're using this block and rescue, right? Okay, fine. Now, what is this always? So here, what happened, right? In this case, if this is getting failed, this task, it means that this task is under the block. It means that you have a rescue plan for, you have some plan. So that plan you have mentioned in rescue, right? You will say that uh, Rajesh, whatever might be the case. Okay, uh, so whatever might be the case, there are some particular tasks are there, which it should get always executed, irrespective of whether any task is getting failed or passed, I'm not bothered. Always my task should always get executed, always. So in that case, you will be using this always. Always will make sure that that particular task, at any cost, it will get executed, right? So in that case, what you will be using, guys, you will be using a always. So how to use it, how to call it? So same thing, here I will be using this always. Right, and here you could see that I'm using this always, always. What is it? What you will do? Okay, let me don't think. Let me give two spaces hyphen apt app model. So what is it? What you have to install some pa some package I have to install. Let me install. Give two spaces name tree is a package I'm installing, and the state is nothing but it is a present. So it means that whatever this happens. Whatever this block and rescue is happening, okay. Whatever this condition is happening, or whatever this block and rescue is working, fine. This is working fine. Irrespective of whether which is executed, which are not executed, I'm not bothered. But my task, one of the specific tasks, should always get executed, irrespective of what are the other tasks which are there above. So in that case, what happened? At all when if you mention always, always this whatever the task which is there under this always, it'll always get executed, irrespective of any of the condition above what above whatever it has executed, right? That it doesn't bother, it will get executed. So it this is also sometimes very much useful, right? Like for example, you have to execute certain tasks always whenever you are executing a playbook file. In that case, you have to mention that particular task in this block, right? So this always, A, it, sh it should align with this rescue. It should allow it basically with this models, it should get aligned so that there is no syntax error. Okay, guys. So what we will do now, we will try to, you know, like uh, write this playbook file now and then execute it. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll go to our, so let me create a file here. What is the file name? I'll just say as a, a block uh, sq always dot yaml, something, right? So then you have to use three spaces. Uh, three hyphen, sorry, hyphen name. This is to demonstrate the usage of block 
rescue and always right and then you will just say force all right become s then what you will do that you have to write a task success you two spaces here use hyphen then use block here so again what happened at give two spaces here one two hyphen line in file mode we are calling it right give two spaces one two path what is a path slash temp slash my file dot txt and what is it you have to write you are saying that you have to write the some text inside that file like welcome to ansible session something right now if this block is getting failed then what is a plan you have you have some kind of a rescue plan what is it so you are using calling a rescue here right rescue here. there is no hyphen here right it doesn't start the hyphen so that you have to take care and this r should align with this b block right so then give two spaces hyphen file module you are calling and then like from here give two spaces give path slash temp slash myfile.txt right and then like use the uh, state as uh, what is it whenever you want to create a normal file you have to use a touch actually right touch so that will create an empty file and then after that you are using one more model that is again the same line file model right and then like here you give two spaces eth path Slash m slash my file dot txt and then line same thing whatever you have the above right same thing you are repeating here actually welcome to ansible session right and what else you have you will need to even use this always right always give two spaces you will say hyphen apt model because it's all ubuntu servers right so that's what i have to use apt model give two spaces name what is a package name tree is a package and the state is nothing but present or installed whatever you can use you can either use installed or present or is updated right so this is a simple example guys to show you how exactly this block rescue and always works actually right so let us execute it so what we will do we'll log into our console aws console so let me log into the aws console so console.aws.com aws.amazon.com so let me log into my credential i think i have stopped the servers i need to restart it actually start it sorry not restart start it so yesterday after the session right i just stopped it so basically as i said i mean keep telling many times that whenever you are using the servers in your aws account right make sure at the end of the day when you stop practicing or when you finished your practicing right make sure that you either stop it or even terminate also suppose you want re you can even reinstall again everything right you can even do that it it's left to you so what i will do that i have stopped it i will just start it actually start the instance So this will come up. So let me refresh it. <clears throat> yes, this has come up. This has been running. So let me wait for the next server to come up. So running. But you could say that the status checking is initializing. So yes, you can log into the servers. Let us check if I'm able to log into the server. So I'll just click on this Ansible server, go to the networking, copy this public IP, come over in the putty. So I'll just try to load the defaults, load it, and then just provide the IP address, public. So here, you just accept it. Log in as a root user account. 
So because I configured everything as a root user, so that's what I'm logging as a root user. So I have logged in into the Ansible server, right? Similarly, you have to log into the other two servers also. Like let me log into the node one and node two. Copy the public IP, go to the putty session and load the defaults, copy the public IP. This is for the node one, accept it and then log in as a root user. Okay, I just logged in as a root user. So node one I have logged in, same thing with node two. So I have logged in all the nodes as well as an Ansible server. So let me verify I'm able to ping to both the servers. So Ansible hyphen M ping all. So always you should make sure that always you have to first check this, whether you're able to reach to the, all the nodes, whatever is there in your inventory. So what is there in my inventory? If you do a cat of ETC Ansible uh, host file, you could see that both these servers, like node one IP and node two IP addresses, IP addresses are there in my host file, right? So this is the, your inventory file, correct? So now what I will do, I will go to my Ansible example. There I'll create a file vi, uh, what is it? Block hyphen rescue hyphen always dot yaml file. I'll go to the insert mode. So let me copy this whole content, right? And then like paste it, right? So here, so you have pasted it, right? Now, you can save this file. Now what you'll do, you'll try to run, call an Ansible hyphen playbook command, and you use block hyphen rescue, and then use this syntax hyphen check is equal to S. So just checking it. So what is it, guys? Ansible hyphen playbook argument syntax hyphen check. Hyphen hyphen syntax hyphen check. Right, not yes, right? So this is, so the syntax is correct. That's what, right? So let me execute this playbook file now. So just remove this hyphen hyphen syntax hyphen check. Just say enter. Right, so, so it say that it doesn't exist. That's what it say that the file in file doesn't exist. Hence what happened, the block got failed and the rescue has been called here. So the rescue is trying to create this file as well as you could see that actually the app also always is also getting executed. So here guys, you could see that actually even though this model got failed, uh, that particular task got failed, still what happened, right? The execution proceeded further because like you had a rescue here. So in the rescue, you are creating the file and you are trying to, again, you're trying to, uh, you know, append this text inside this file. So let us go to the node one and go to the temp territory and see that actually there's a file by name my file exists. So if you do a cat of my file, you could see that this content is there in that file. Here also, you know, note to the same stuff actually, cd to the temp and you could see that cat of my file exists, right? Now assume that actually I will let me remove this file, uh, remove this file in node two and I'll create this file actually by just calling a, using a touch command and just creating an empty file. So this file exists now, right? So let me remove all the things. So I'll use a touch command to create this file. So this file exists now. Even here also in node one, let me remove everything first. So rm hyphen rf star and use a touch command by for creating this my file dot txt. So now you know that this file is created. So what I will do, let me rerun this playbook again now. So now you know very well that because that file exists, this block will get success executed. In that case, this rescue will not be called at all. So this, this section will not be called, but finally always will always get executed. As I said, right? Irrespective of whatever it happens, it always will get executed. So let's see now. So now this file exists. So let me rerun the playbook file again. See here, gathering the facts. 
right line in file so this is success executed see apt is getting called actually it means that rescue has not been called so here what is happening that this block whatever is there this has got success executed then there's no need of calling this so this is what very important right like at any case your playbook file should never get failed right so always you have to use this block and rescue right though it's a very small topic it really makes your playbook very smarter so as i said earlier even in yesterday session also i said like there are so many small small topics are there so many small concepts are there but it plays a very important role while writing a playbook file right and always will get executed right irrespective of suppose both these are getting failed still always will get executed right so that's what it is right and then like here you could see that again you go here and you do a cat of my file now you could see that it has written a text that welcome to ansible session into this file right okay guys so this concludes our understanding of this block rescue as a resolve okay now what is the next topic what we have so there are few more topics are there like for example you have ansible vault so v a u l t so guys this is also very very important topic so basically ansible vault il is it is used to encrypt the file now for example that whenever you are writing a playbook file suppose i write a playbook file so i write a playbook file so basically you will keep the playbook file in your ansible server itself like how i have kept all my file under ansible examples right if you go to the ansible examples if you do an ls you could see that almost all my uh, playbook file i have written or i have placed in my ansible have an example folder right if you execute pwd you could see that it is there in this part now the thing is that actually so it is fine if i am maintaining all this playbook file it is fine assume that some other person has been given access to this server onto this ansible servers and there are some important uh, playbook files are there which you have written and which you don't want to share or nobody other person don't want to see that playbook file so if they see the playbook file maybe they might copy certain things what you have written in the playbook file or there might be some security related things which you have mentioned in your playbook file which you don't want to show to some other persons so in that case what happened right any person other person who has an access to this server what he will do right he can actually view this file he can open the file like this he can open that file like this like he can open the file he can see the complete uh, you know like uh, Uh, playbook uh, content and we can even even if we have a permission even he can run that playbook file also he can modify that playbook he can even run also so in that case what happened that there is some lag of security here actually so that's the reason what happened right this ansible vault right this ansible vault plays a very uh, vital role right basically whenever you write a playbook file and those playbook file are very highly critical files right and you don't want to showcase those files to some other person basically by using ansible vault you can basically you can encrypt that file actually it means that if you encrypt any file by using ansible vault nobody no other person can view that file because like if anybody opens that file it lasts for the password actually it lasts for the password so since the other person might not know be no might not be knowing the password he cannot open that file he cannot view the content similarly what happened right you have a host file also like you have a etc ansible host file so basically you know very well that most of the time in the host file also we will be maintaining a lot of variables a lot of variables in the host file as well as you will also be maintaining the credentials it means that basically you will be maintaining the usernames and passwords actually right so you could see that you could you remember that in our previous sessions right one uh, you know use the provide the username and password in the host file itself right so that you could see that in i think in the ansible day 12 session i have mentioned all those things i have shown you all those things so what happened that the host file is also now it's a very critical file because you are maintaining what are the variables which you are passing whenever the playbook file is getting so that information you will be mentioning in the host file plus you are maintaining the user accounts right user and password right which are our very important very critical uh, informations those information also are available in this host file 
Suppose assume that some other person has been given access to this server, Ansible server. So he can directly come to this path and he can open and he can see it actually. And he can understand what is the user and the password. So he can, uh, you know, he can damage, uh, uh, you know, he can damage or he can even do changes into it or he can take a control of you, the nodes and all. So he can play with that actually. So you need to avoid it actually. So that's the reason what happened, right? There are cases many times what happened that the Ansible developer will also encrypt even the host file also. So he said that Rajesh, nobody should watch even or nobody should open and see this ETC Ansible host file also. So in that case also, you will be providing an encryption by using the with the help of an Ansible vault. So that's the reason guys, uh, Ansible vault, it provides an encryption. So where uh, while uh, creating an encryption, it asks for the password, you need to uh, set the password. Once you set the password, you are the owner of the file. It means that only you can open that file. No other person can view the content in the file, right? So that's the reason Ansible Vault is very much used. And this is very important because in most, it, it's not like in most of the interview, almost all the interview, they will ask you about what is the Ansible Vault? Have you worked on Ansible Vault? Where it is used? Like that, they will ask you. And one or two, some simple questions they might ask you in Ansible Vault, okay? So now let's see like how to use this Ansible Vault. So before using that, what I would do that, let me create some file by my own, right? For example, let me create some, any file actually. I'll say touch Alice file. I'll open the Alice file. I'll just try to write some text inside that file. Hi, hello everyone, something. Hello everyone. Welcome to Ansible, right? Some text I've added into this file. So I'll save this file. So whenever you want to view the file, either you can use a VI command to open the file or else you can even use a cat command to open this file, right? This is a simple Linux command to see the content of the file. Now you say that I just know I should encrypt this file so that nobody should run a VI or a cat command onto it actually. So in that case, what you will do? So there is a command by name Ansible hyphen vault. So if you just do a tab, you could see that if you do a tab tab, if you just do a Ansible hyphen tab tab, can you see here? You're having so many commands to start the Ansible and you could see that there's something like Ansible vault. Yes, Ansible vault is there, right? Even you can do help also here, Ansible vault hyphen fn help. If you execute the hyphen fn help, you could see that there are so many arguments are there which you can pass to, to the Ansible vault. So those arguments are create, decrypt, edit, view, encrypt, rekey. So these are some of the few arguments are there which you will be passing it actually. So now what I will be doing, I will be using this encrypt as a position argument actually. So how I'll do, I'll just say Ansible hyphen vault encrypt actually, encrypt, E-N-I-Y-P-T. And specify the file name. So here the file name is Alice, right? So I'll just say Ansible hyphen vault encrypt and give the file name. So I'll just say enter. Now you could see that it is asking me for the password. Let me give some password. I'll give the password as something like a one, two, three password. I can give anything. I'm just giving one, two, three and confirm the password. Give the same thing, one, two, three. Now you could say that it has, you know, it has added an encryption successfully. It means that now this file has been encrypted. It means that if you want to open that file or if you want to view the content of this file, you could see that if I do a cat of Alice, see, you cannot see the content of the file. So everything is encrypted. It is encrypted. You cannot see it actually. So if you say VI add is also, okay, here also it is encrypted. It means that you cannot use any command to open, see the content. Now you will say that Rajesh, I want to view the content of that file. So how to view the content of the file, guys? So I have to use Ansible, iPhone Vault, view, and specify that file name Alice. Enter. So it'll ask you for the vault password. You have to give the password one, two, three, and say enter. Now you could see, now you could see the content of the file, right? So either this way you can view the content of the file or else you can decrypt the file. Again, you can view the content. It means that for decrypting, you have to say Ansible hyphen vault. And if you do a hyphen hyphen help, you could see that actually there's an option on the decrypt option. So shall I use this decrypt option? Yes, I'll just say Ansible hyphen vault, I will use a decrypt space, specify the file name Alice. So this is basically decrypting the entire file, right? And say enter, 
it asked me for the vault password i'll give one two three password so it has decrypted such it means that it has it has decrypted the file so now you can just say cat of alice right now you can see the content either you can use a view or either you can decrypt and do it so decrypt basically what happened it will remove that encryption so now this file is no more an encrypted file because it is now a plain text file again you want to enable the encryption means you have to use a ansible hyphen vault encrypt en c r y p t and space specify the file name and one say one two three again say one two three now this file has been encrypted so either you can just call an ansible if you don't want to decrypt it you want to view it you can just say ansible hyphen vault view and then specify the file name so you are actually not encrypting it decrypting it actually you are actually viewing but it will ask you for the password i need to provide the password okay okay so now that's how it is now you will say that rajesh i want to add some text inside the file it is already having this two lines i want to add one more line or i want to append it so basically what you can do you can just say ansible hyphen vault what is it sir i have to use a option by name edit actually edit and specify this file name alex so now it will ask you for the password give the password as 123 and say enter now it has opened the file and here you can go and you can edit the file like welcome to aws something and save this file so it has saved the file again you want to view it you can just use a ansible vault view alice and again it last you for the password you one two three password now you can see that this third line you could see now so this line we have appended right so always whenever you want to append uh, the text inside the file you have to always use the edit option so ansible vault edit and specify the file name by name alice okay guys now so that's what the ansible vault plays a very important role actually right like for example uh, assume that you are saying that uh, rajesh i want to create a file actually while creating a file itself now here what happened right you are you are actually encrypting to an existing file right you are you are encrypting to an existing file you will say that rajesh i want to create a file but it in a in an encrypted fashion itself actually so it means that while creating itself i want to enable the encryption so in that case i'll just you are ansible hyphen vault Uh, you can use a create and give the file name something like bob file name so what is the encryption you will give i'll give the password as 456 enter 456 enter see it has opened that file here you can add some text inside the file and then save it see so now if you do an ls you could see that a file by name bob has been created so if you do a file on bob it will show that it is an ascii file itself so you will understand that it is like a plain text file but when you do a cat on bob right you will not be able to see the content properly so now in this way you will be able to understand that okay this file has already been encrypted by using ansible vault so it means that whenever i want to view this file i have to use a ansible hyphen vault and then use a view and then specify the file name like this only so last for the password you have to give 456 and enter now you can view the content of the file okay so this is all our very important guys actually right now what we will do now like basically i will be uh, what i will be doing right i will be using a uh, some existing playbook file itself i need not to write any playbook file so what i will do right i will try to use some existing file so something like a must first playbook dot sh so this is what i have written it actually right so you will say that rajesh i will be using the same file for my encryption actually right for my showcasing the example on ansible vault actually so let me don't think let me copy the content of this file so let me create a file by name something like ansible vault v a u l t vault dot yaml file v a u l t vault right dot yaml file then paste it like right so you are doing a few basic uh, basic stuff like you are call, calling a copy model and you are trying to copy this file under the temp right uh, so basically i will try to remove this owner and all owner mode and all i'll try to remove i don't want to use this right and then like under this temp you are creating aws uh, aws uh, you know directory 
and you are trying to execute or you are trying to install some duplicate package actually right like this so these are the simple tasks which you are doing under your wall.yaml right so now what i will do i will come back to your ansible server and then like what i will do i will go to the ansible examples here i will use something like va ult vault.yaml so i'll open this file and i'll just try to paste this content right i will copy this content i'll paste it like this okay and i will save this file so this is my file vault.yaml okay let me do one thing guys let me go to the node 1 and node 2 i will try to remove everything i don't want to have this content under the temp so i'll remove everything fine now i'll come back to your to the ansible server now you will just say that rajesh if this file is given to you anybody who is having a permission or who has a credential to log into this ansible server he can actually go to this path and he can open this file and he can see this content right now you will say that rajesh nobody should see my content so what do you do you just go ahead with encrypting this file so what you will how do you encrypt it you will just say ansible hyphen vault right and what you will do you will just say e n r y p t encrypt specify the file name vault dot yaml file so it last you for the password i let me give the password as abc password as abc we uh, confirm one more time abc so you have provided the encryption password now right now if you do a ansible or if you do a cat on vault dot yaml you know very well that this will be in a encrypted form right you will not be able to see the content right so now you say that rajesh okay fine i want to see the content you know very well that i have to use a ansible hyphen vault uh, view and specify the file name that is nothing but your vault dot yaml right so i'll ask you for the password i have the password is abc see i am able to see the content of this vault dot yaml file now now You want to run the uh, run this playbook file. So to run the playbook file, what you will do, guys, you will just say ansible hyphen playbook specify that file vault dot yaml. Now suppose if I run this playbook file this way, whether it will run or not, whether it will execute or not, let's see. See, it says that it is attempt to decrypt it, but no value secret found. It means that it is failed, so it is not able to run this playbook file. Then how you are going to run how you are going to uh, you know like run this playbook file so to run this playbook file guys you have to pass on parameter ansible hyphen playbook vault.yaml because you know very well that it is an encrypted uh, with the help of ansible vault you have to just pass the parameter no just hyphen hyphen ask hyphen v a u l t vault hyphen pass it means that you need to pass this parameter so what it does right whenever you pass this parameter it means that it ask you for the vault password right ansible uh, vault password so if you say enter now you could see that it is asking for the vault password what is the password i have set for this vault.yaml abc is a password right i'll just say abc enter now you could see that the playbook start getting executed so in this way you are maintaining a security right you are maintaining a security right see you could see that the playbook file has executed so if you go back here And if you go to the temp directory, you could see that whatever you required, right, that everything has been executed by your playbook file. Correct, guys? Okay, that's what it is, guys. Okay. So now, as I said, right, whenever you want to uh, do changes, anything to this vault.yaml, what you have to do just you have to just say ansible hyphen vault, and you have to say edit, edit, and specify the file name via ult vault.yaml. So last for the password as you ABC is a password. Now you could see that it has encrypt. It has opened this file. Now you can go and edit if you want to add further anything content. Right, you can edit that file. Right. So I am not doing anything here. I just skip it. So and whenever you want to decrypt it, you know that you have to always use the ansible hyphen vault, and you have to say decrypt. Specify this vault like this. You can run this command. Okay. To decrypt it. So for while decrypting also last for the password. You have to give the password as ABC, right? Like that. One more option, uh, very important, right? Suppose that you want to uh, change the key. Now it is ABC. So you say that Rajesh, I want to change the password of ABC to some other thing. Like how to do it? You have to use a ansible hyphen vault. Uh, you have to use a rekey. 
and specify the file name vault vault.yaml so if you do a rekey you are changing the encrypted password right it will say enter it will ask you for your present existing password that is abc you have to give enter it will ask you for the new password i will give something like xyz again confirm xyz see now it has changed the key actually now the password in the new password is xyz so how to do it i'll just say ansible hyphen vault you want to uh, run the playbook file here you could again run the hyphen hyphen ask hyphen vault hyphen pass it'll ask you the for the password so the password is now xyz i'll give you xyz now you could see that the playbook starts executing so whenever you want to rechange the password guys you have to use ansible vault space rekey and specify that file name yaml file okay so here uh, it is a very small topic but as i said earlier like this adds a very important uh, value right because here you are completely encrypting your file itself so similarly what happened here you are encrypting to your your playbook file tomorrow there might be a chance as i said right you need to even encrypt your host file so whatever you are having etc ansible host file right that itself you need to encrypt it actually so that the process is same you have to use a ansible ansible hyphen vault right and you just say encrypt enr ypt encrypt specify the complete path of that file actually like this password is 123 enter 123 enter see i have provided the password right for this host file now assume that you are running some other uh, playbook file suppose yesterday i had used uh, something known as a uh, ignore_error.yaml right so suppose i want to run this playbook file you could see that ansible hyphen playbook right uh, ignore_errors.yaml file if i am running it what the ansible playbook file will do it will try to look into your uh you know like into your uh, host file actually right the host file now it is not a normal file it is an encrypted file right so you could see that this will fail actually right because it is trying to decrypt it but there is no vault password has been asked right so to do that what you do do that guys you have to say hyphen hyphen ask hyphen vault vault hyphen pass the last for the password i'll give the password as 1 2 3 enter now you could see that the password the okay now you could see that actually it is getting executed so that's all guys right so let me don't think let me and decrypt it because uh, i will be using always right ansible hyphen vault decrypt c r d c r y p t and then specify the etc ansible host file you'll ask me for the password give the password as 1 2 3 enter you have decrypted successfully now again if you want to open the file you can just say normal cat command you can run the to open it you can just do a cat of it is an ansible host file right so guys hope this topic you have understood like and where it is used and all it is very important right so like that and uh, what about the other things right guys what is it actually vault.yaml right i'll just say ansible hyphen vault decrypt Vault dot yaml. So it last me for the password. The password is x y z. So now I have decrypted it successfully. Now, right? now we can see the content of this vault dot yaml. Right. So this is very important, guys. So definitely they will ask you in the interview. Okay, about this Ansible vault. Okay. So that's all today. Uh, not for sorry, not today. That's all about this small topics on this Ansible vault as well as this Ansible block. rescue and all this right now there are few more things are there which i have not yet covered but like uh, i am uh, i just missed it out i have to tell it so what are those things actually like for example whenever you want to debug the ansible uh, playbook file it means that whenever the playbook file is getting executed you want to learn you want to understand what how exactly that playbook file is getting executed or what are things it is doing while executing so in that case what happened that you will be using hyphen v option hyphen v means verbose we say verbose means basically it is in a debugging mode so whenever you are running uh, any playbook file right if you are passing hyphen v option it will show you verbosely what exactly it is doing like for example so let me don't think let me again remove the content what is there in this file what is there in the temp directory so in both the nodes i will remove it so rm hyphen rf star So here also I will do the same stuff, guys. So I'll go here. I'll just say RMI for RF star. Enter. Right. Now 
you could see that I have an example, any example, right? I have a first playbook.yaml, right? This is a simple example I have, right? So, so what I'm doing here, like I will run this playbook file actually, but while running a playbook file, or else what are the other things I have, sir? I have, uh, uh, I can take that example itself. Like for example, if I running the first playbook.yaml, I'll just say ansible hyphen playbook, first playbook.yaml file. But now while executing it, I will be using a hyphen view option. So you want to see what exactly the Ansible is doing while executing this playbook file. So to view it or to see the into the debugging mode, you have to use a hyphen view option. So if you say enter, you could see that it is using this configuration file as a config file. And you could see that it is showing you some information like what exactly this copy model is doing, right? Onto this server, onto this server. Similarly, what is the file model it is doing? You could see that by seeing this content, you could be able to understand what exactly your Ansible is doing while executing that playbook file. It means that each and every task, whatever it is executing, right? To some, uh, some information, it will show you while executing it. That's what we use this hyphen view option. But what happens sometimes, what happens, you say that, Rajesh, I need uh, you know some more info actually. So in that case, you can use a hyphen V along with one more hyphen V or just say hyphen VV twice. So this will give you a little more, uh, you know, like debugging, uh, uh, you know, debugging logs actually. So let us re-execute this playbook file again with the hyphen two Vs we'll use actually. See, here still it is showing, see, you could see that it is showing you many other things like, for example, what is the configuration file it is using, right? What are the different uh, configuration uh, values it is using from this file? as well as uh, it will be showing you some more in details, even though it has executed, it will be showing you some more details about this. So, I mean, this would not be a right example to show, but if you have some complex playbook file where you have mentioned many of the steps, right? In that case, what happened, right? This values, this hyphen double V will play a very vital role for, your, for you to analyze it actually. Like for example, if I do a, uh, like Ansible install apache.yaml, right? install apache.yaml even though even apache is installed it right you are actually trying to uh, you have installed it let me uh, let me not this one or any other thing i have uh, what other things i have guys actually different tasks ignore tax.yaml is there okay that is also simple only you can take anything actually Right, so you can even run the tags.yaml also. Like for example, if you do an Ansible hyphen playbook, okay, tags.yaml space hyphen double V. So it will show you more verbosity. It will show you more, you know, like, uh, uh, it will show you more debugging uh, logs, what exactly the playbook is doing. So this is very helpful while debugging. Certain times what happened that right? your playbook file might fail you might not understand it. In that case, you will be using this verbose method. So up to what level you can use the verbose level? You can either use a single V, double V, or you can use a triple V. Triple V is more information, or else you will use the four Vs, actually. Four Vs you will be using. So, but this four Vs, it will be still, it will be showing many more information, which is very difficult to track, or it is very difficult to understand. Right, if I use a four Vs here, right? See, if I use a three Vs, see what will happen that? It will show you some more logs actually. See, it is showing you many more logs. So 